Welcome to the summer edition of the Sprint Success with Design Thinking podcast. How do you navigate change? It's a question we think about often and one that today's world expects us to be comfortable with. The challenge, however, is where do you begin and how do you develop the mindset and skill set to be successful? Welcome everyone to the Sprint to Success with Design Thinking podcast. I'm your host, Saba Kidwai. Join me each week as I share the stories and strategies from the world's leading researchers and practitioners about why they believe the answer lies in practicing design thinking. This is probably at least 50% of my work with women leaders. And the, the, the hardest cases to crack are my PhD clients and my MDs. Like the people with the most letters after their name, the most education, have, they have this deep, deep vulnerable fear that they have to say or get everything perfect, either because of you know childhood socialization or because somebody's life is on the line in their work. So they're very, very careful. Um, the only way, and there's only a very, very few studies about imposter syndrome and how to address it. And the only way that has been studied is getting into groups of other women that you feel safe with and respect and hearing that they also have imposter syndrome. And you look at them, yeah, that's why I run groups <laughs> because it's so effective. We hear each other, right? You're like, these incredible women, I can't believe you have imposter syndrome. And then you're like, oh, I have it too. And they can't believe I have it. And here's the trick. I don't know that it ever goes away. The only way to manage it is to consistently like, okay, I'm having imposter syndrome and I have a, like a, a personal board of directors or I have a team or I have a coach that I'm working with that I can go to repeatedly who reminds me it's just a story. You were socialized or you live in this incredibly toxic culture that doesn't allow you to feel whole and worthy. So it really is about getting into groups of people that you respect and being vulnerable with. And that's the only way to manage it. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that so much. That's why I only, I don't work with jerks anymore. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I mean, I really try not to. I work with clients who, I mean, clients are always in trouble. Like, they, you know, they don't, I don't get called if, if things are going well, generally speaking. And it doesn't mean that people aren't problematic. But for the most part, like, I try to work with people who, who bring us a, a certain spark of joy to me and who are, who are willing, you know, who are willing to make change. Because it's just too... It's too much pushing against, and, I, and I've been a process seller, seller for years. You know, like in when I was working in agile software development, a few other things, and I'm like, yeah, the process doesn't fit. You know, it's all it's it's people all the way down, right? It's all it's all people problems. But I, I love that about being in groups. One of the things that I've noticed, I think, for myself in imposter syndrome is that I have to keep reminding myself is the stuff that makes me the most valuable is the stuff that find that I probably find most easiest. Like that's where my talents are. And by definition, almost, we tend to devalue something if it's that it's easy, you know? And so I just have to remind myself that, oh, that thing that's really hard. Like, I do a lot of writing, and I'm really impressed with people who, like, dig into scientific studies. And I can't tell you, I hate reading scientific studies. So, like, I read, I read the, the condensed versions, or I read, you know, like, or I, or I watch the TED Talk, or I get, you know, like, and I, you know, and I have to try to have some rigor around it, but I just really, like, that's just not the way I orient towards the world. And so I try to also stay in my lane as well and be like, okay, this is, this is who I am in the world and that's who you are in the world. And I think again, like when it comes to teamwork and all of that, like really, really, really embracing um, people's differences. Like I'm like my, my business partner now um, who I can, we have a small consulting firm together. Like she's like deeply analytic, like deeply, you know, like she's like Harvard MBA, deeply analytic, very strategy focused. And I'm like, and, and yet we just have this incredible, like often I feel like really dumb around her, you know, like we'll be in meetings and she'll say stuff and I'll just feel so stupid. And then later, but she's also loves me, which is wonderful. So she'll say, oh my God, that meeting, you saved it because doing that. And I'm like, well, I did what? You know, like, so yeah. So like having people around you who can reflect why you're great is, is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's your turn to join the conversation by sharing what you enjoyed or what questions you still have. 
In a world where time and attention are so valuable, thank you for choosing to listen and for being a part of our Sprint to Success with Design Thinking community. 